Sometimes come on, I'm lonely and I'm blue. I need you and your love to come on and rescue me. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. As you can tell by the words that magically appeared below me here just a second ago, I have a new feature of sorts on my channel. Uh, and I don't know how frequent or infrequent this feature is going to be, because its content depends on a stream of content that may be unpredictable in terms of how much I get, how frequently. Uh, but yes, the concept, the, the title is pretty much self-explanatory, Rescue Records, uh, but let me give you a little context here. Uh, at House of Records, which is the store that I like to go to um, in, here locally in the Eugene Springfield area, uh, I, I've, I usually go there three or four times a week. This was pre-pandemic, uh, but lately I work at the office only one day a week, so it's only been one day a week that I get to go in there. But um, the people who bring in records and CDs and, to, and tapes to sell to the store, uh, if the store doesn't want to take some of the stuff that they're trying to sell, and if the person doesn't want to take them to another store or to Goodwill or the trash or whatever, they'll just leave it behind at the store and it goes onto a shelf that's right by the door as you're going out. And this is basically the freebie shelf. So yes, if you see something there that you like, you can take it home for free and, you know, it doesn't cost you a dime. So, but yes, that is basically the concept of this uh, feature. It is stuff that I have found off the freebie shelf, stuff that I've rescued off the freebie shelf, as it were, brought home, cleaned up, and gave a listen to, because how can you beat the price of free? Really, there's, you know, it doesn't cost you a thing except the energy that it takes to tote at home, I guess. Uh, sometimes I'll find nothing at all there on the freebie shelf, and that can go, that can happen for weeks at a time. Uh, sometimes there'll be a little bit of stuff here, and sometimes there'll be a whole lot of stuff on that freebie shelf. And uh, I've talked about these records and CDs that I've gotten for free uh, in other videos, mainly in my playlist videos, but I also did a video a couple of years ago that was a, uh, a massive freebies finds video that I, where I found a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, I just, just thought it was a neat idea to kind of put these uh, these finds in their own video every month and just to talk about them. And so yes, uh, I, I clean the tape, the uh, records and CDs up as best I can. I mean, tapes you really can't clean unless the outside shell is dirty. Hey everyone, uh, yeah, the rest of the video was a little bit shorter than I was expecting it would be, so I thought I would just go ahead and interject this uh, section in here to show you how I clean my records and my CDs just very briefly. Uh, as far as CDs go, it's, it's very simple. Uh, if your CD has any marks on it, uh, you guys probably already know this, uh, microfiber cloth and just fog it up with your breath and wipe it. And with CDs, remember you wipe in a straight line from the center hub outward, not in a circular fashion, because that could cause scratches if your microfiber cloth has dust or grit on it. Uh, and if there, there are stubborn marks that you can't quite get off with just, you know, fogging it up and breathing and uh, wiping it, uh, eyeglass cleaner, laser lens cleaner, things like that, that works just fine. And it does not damage your CDs. So. That's pretty, you know, a pretty simple procedure for CDs, but uh, with records, which is the, the main attraction here, uh, this is my Spin Clean record cleaning system. Uh, it's, it's deceptively simple, honestly. It's a really simple system. Uh, one of the big reasons I bought it was made and assembled in the USA. I, I'm all in favor of that. But yes, basically what it is is it's just a plastic basin like this. Uh, it's got a pair of rollers, just plain plastic rollers, and this thing can clean 12 inch, 10 inch, and seven inch records, and it has slots for these rollers to fit uh, all three sizes. And what I do is I put a, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I put, I put a towel down here on the surface that I'm gonna be uh, cleaning records with, because it could get a little wet. Uh, if you're careful, it won't, but you know. And anyway, yeah, a basin, basin with these two rollers, and then these two brushes, which, I mean, they're, they're felt brushes they don't have any actual bristles it's just a felt uh, pad that cleans the records and these brushes go against each other in slots down here in the middle so yes uh, you fill the basin with uh, two and three quarters cups water i measured it as well as uh, one and it says one but i usually just use two for good measure capfuls of the spin clean record cleaning solution and what it is basically is it's not an actual cleaning solution per se. It's just a chemical formulation that grabs whatever grime and dirt and dust come off the records and draws it down to the bottom of the basin so that it, it doesn't get on the next records that you clean. So 
pretty ingenious little, little system, I thought. So yes, uh, put the brushes in here like this, and they lock down pretty, pretty snugly. They don't tend to uh, pull up on you when you pull the records out. But yes, a very simple procedure. Uh, you take a record, and when it's a picture sleeve or something like that, I always hang on to the picture sleeve, but I always re-sleeve the records, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'll, I'll show you this. Oh yeah, this, this actually is a good uh, example of how dirty the record is before I clean it. And I don't know, I can't guarantee that it'll show well here on camera. But yes, basically what you do is you insert the record uh, between the brushes naturally, uh, all the way down until it stops. And you give it three full rotations in one direction and then three full rotations in the other direction. And what I do is I make sure that the label facing me is usually face down so that I can count the number of revolutions I go. So yeah, three re revolutions one way and then three revolutions the other way. So yes, so, so that I know when to stop after I've done three re revolutions is basically why I orient the label in a certain direction. When you pull the record out, I heard this in another another YouTube video, uh, and so I just kind of followed it. I can't remember which YouTube video it was, but I don't pull the record straight upward to come out. I lift it out kind of diagonally and leave it in just enough so that it sits upright and give a couple minutes for whatever standing water there is to trickle back down into the basin. So just so that it's not dripping, dripping wet when it comes out. Uh, you would think that because there's no protection on the label that the label might get wet, but actually when the water comes off, it follows the grooves, so it goes around the label. I have cleaned 250 records with this thing, and one or two records, I've gotten a couple little drops on the label, and that's it. Believe it or not, that, that crazy physics thing actually works. Anyway, I'll give it a couple minutes to drip dry like that, and then I shake the last little bit of water in there, and then I have one of the microfiber cloths. The Spin Clean kit comes with several of these, or no, excuse me, not microfiber cloth, but just a, a cleaning pad or a cleaning rag like this. Yay words. And I put one of those out flat. Uh, you can't really see it. It's just out, out of camera here, but right here, so that I put the record on it. And then I use another one to blot the standing water. You don't wipe it, you just blot it, just so that it gets all the standing water off the record. Like that, I do it one side and then flip it over and do the same thing with the other side. And then you'll notice I have this thing right here. It's just a uh, like a paper organizer or a desk organizer thing. You get the general idea. And you use that for a drying rack. So you take the record and just set it in here like this. And you let the records dry for about five minutes, uh, just you know, just to get the, the water that's on it still on it to evaporate. Give it about five to minutes, maybe ten. So once I've cleaned, this thing will hold five records. So once I've cleaned five records, I get up, I go do something else for about 10 minutes, and then I come back and I will show you what I do when I come back. Okay, so it's been about five, actually it's been closer to 10 minutes. And so what I've done is I've taken the um, squishy cloths, that the, uh, the rags that come with the spin clean, and I've got a couple of microfiber cloths sold separately, and I'm putting one of the big ones, laying it out flat uh, where I laid the uh, the rag before, and I've got a smaller one here. And what I do now is, now that the records are dry, I take them one at a time, and uh, you might be able to see it is remarkably much cleaner. Now obviously it kind of goes without saying, if the records are kind of dull and, you know, the, the sheen on the records is gone from all the years of age, uh, that obviously it won't polish the records at all and of course any scratches or marks that are on the records already are not going to go anywhere. The Spin Clean just removes the dirt and the grime from on the surface and 95-99% of it from in the grooves. So yes, the, the normal marks and stuff are still going to be there but your records are going to sound a heck of a lot better, so much better. And so what I do is I lay the record down on the microfiber cloth and use the other microfiber cloth just to give it a quick wipe, just you know, around one side and then the other, you know, just a dust or hair or whatever might still be on there, just to get that stuff off. The, the lint, any lint that might be on there, you know, do it uh, like I did with blotting the records earlier. Do it one side, flip it over, do it on the other side. And then uh, I I always re-sleeve my records with uh, just so that I can, partly so I can tell that these are records that I've cleaned. 
I've just got these uh, three mil, or are they four mil? I can't remember. Uh, poly sleeves, slip them on the records, like that. And go back into the jackets. And so yeah, that is basically how I clean my records. And uh, yeah, you would probably be surprised at how much better they sound. And as I've said, I've cleaned 250 of them, at least, not counting these. And um, I have not had a bad experience, bad results yet. I am extremely satisfied with this Spin Clean record care system. And yeah, the one, uh, you know, filling of the thing, you can clean, they say up to uh, 30 or 40 records, I think. Uh, and it's basically, you just judge by how dingy the water is getting as to whether or not you should stop and you know dump out and rinse out the reservoir and start all over again or not but yes this spin clean has got to be one of the best purchases i have ever made uh, no product placement i'm not sponsoring they're not sponsoring this video i'm just saying this is what i bought to clean my records so yeah i guess that's it for this little uh interlude here so back to the main video uh, but yes, uh, and I found some interesting stuff uh, by way of the freebie shelf, stuff that I would not ordinarily have tried otherwise. So yes, I thought I would uh, talk about, since this, this, this is the first installment, I actually have two of each, records, tapes, and CDs, to show you. And I might, just to uh, give this uh, feature a little, few, a little bit more legs going into it, you know, the first few months or so, I might talk about some retroactively that I've found you know, previously, but otherwise, you know, once I get the feature going, it'll just be stuff that I have found recently since the previous Rescue Records videos that I found. So, but yes, going into it, let's talk about, uh, uh, yeah, as I said, I've got two records to talk about. The first one is, it's actually one that I have had on CD, but hey, when I find the record for free, I'm going to get it and, and uh, upgrade, I guess you'd say, from CD to vinyl. This is an album called Touchdown by Bob James. He's a jazz artist, and this album's biggest claim to fame is the song Angela, which, w which was used as the theme for the TV series Taxi. It was a sitcom that was aired back in the 70s. Danny DeVito, Judd Hirsch, great, great sitcom, very, very funny show. Uh, but yes, this is, I mean, and I mean, the album version is like five or six minutes long. And that's the thing with Bob James, at least uh, in through this era of albums, a lot of his compositions were nice and long stuff, uh, you know, long tracks. For instance, this one only has five tracks on it, uh, three tracks on side A and two tracks on side B. But yes, some great, great jazz stuff on here. And uh, you got to love the uh, gatefold cover art here, big old football, uh, to go with the album name Touchdown. But yes, a very, very nice album. And some of the uh, guest artists that he has here is uh, um, include Earl Clue as well as uh, Hubert Laws, uh, Steve Gadd, David Sanborn. So yes, a kind of a kind of an all-star cast in a way. Uh, but yeah, very very good enjoyable album and I actually found a second Bob James album. I I don't know if it was the one immediately before or after this, but the one right around in the same era. At the same time I found this one and yeah, it was kind of dirty and that's the thing with with records i always if especially if i get them off of the freebie shelf i always give them a good cleaning before they touch my turntable here so because you don't know what dirt or other debris might be hiding in the grooves but yeah i cleaned it up real nicely and it's got a little bit of a warp to it but very little surface noise and no skipping so yeah the the, the surface of the, of the record didn't look pretty that's probably why it was on the freebie shelf but, uh, you know, as I said, how can you beat the price tag of zero dollars and zero cents? Uh, I certainly can't. So, yes, yeah, that was very, very fun. Uh, nice little treasure to bring home. And uh, then the other record that we have is a uh, fairly popular one. It is Glenn Campbell and his album Southern Nights. The title track, of course, is one of his biggest hits uh, of his career, right along with Rhinestone Cowboy and Wichita Lineman. But yes, a fantastic uh, song there. And he also does a version of the Beach Boys' God Only Knows, as well as the Neil Diamond song Sunflower. So it's a very, very nice album. And I, I don't know if I have... Actually, I do think I, think I have a, an early Glenn Campbell instrumental album. But other than that, I don't think I had any Glenn Campbell before this one. And this was a good place to start. And uh, yes, this one was very, very thrashed. I mean, it was very clear why this was on the freebie shelf. Uh, the jacket I had to actually tape up yeah, two sides of the jacket, the, the spine side and the bottom uh, uh, side of it, pretty much coming apart completely. And also another indication as to why it was on the freebie shelf was, yes, lots of a, a kind of a, a log of, this was a radio station copy, uh, K-A-Y-O, and the date written on it is uh, April 20th of 1977. 
I don't know if that's the date that they got the record or what, but yeah, they had uh, they kept a log here of the number of times, or, or the dates when they played each of the songs, and obviously uh, Southern Nights and God Only Knows, I think, were the two songs that they played the most, but yeah, it, it's kind of a cool little uh, insight into what uh, how the radio industry did things back in the old days before computers and uh you know mp3 digital playlists and stuff so yeah kind of a, a nice little artifact but yeah i am going to this is just going to be a placeholder until i find a much better condition copy of it the record itself plays just fine a little bit of surface noise uh, and uh as i recall no skipping so again you know a great uh, a great find for the price of free so yeah great stuff now, the two cassettes that I'm going to talk about today are not recent rescues, uh, but they both have, uh, each one has a significance to me in a different way, and I, uh, plus I'm doing vinyl and CDs in this episode of Rescue Records, so why leave cassettes out of the fun? You know, give them a little, uh, a little shout out as well. Uh, plus, uh, like I said, I want to uh, try and give this feature a little bit more legs, you know, stretch it out by doing some retroactive rescues, retro rescues, uh, in addition to the recent uh, rescues that I find as well. So, uh, this first one, I have actually owned. I, I actually own it on vinyl. Uh, I bought that at a, at a garage sale several years ago, and I also owned it on CD at one point. So, this is an album I've owned on all three major formats at some point in my music owning history. And this one in question is "Can't Slow Down" by Lionel Richie, one of his most successful solo albums. Uh, it has uh, "Penny Lover" as well as "All Night Long." two of his biggest hits, and Hello, another one of his big, big hits, is on this album. A fantastic album from the 80s. Great stuff here. And uh, yeah, this was on the Freebie Shelf at House of Records. And uh, this next one has uh, probably an even bigger significance, I guess you'd say, because not only was it on the Freebie Shelf at the same time as the cassette deck was that I brought home and uh, re uh, cleaned up and am now currently using, but this was the first tape that I put into the deck to test it after I'd cleaned it and mixed, fixed it up. And this is an album called Pata Pata by Dorothy Mazuka. Uh, she's an African uh, artist and I had never heard of her before and put this on and this was the tape that really blew me away at how good a cassette deck can sound. So yes, this yeah this has some real significance to me and yeah just f a lot of fun jubilant African music in here. Um, I'm kind of surprised I haven't dived more deeply into the genre just in these last few months since I played this tape. When I'm in the mood for it, I do like world music, and this is some of the most likable world music I have ever come across, in my opinion. But yeah, Dorothy Mazuka. If you are not familiar with her, check her out if you'd like, uh, if you'd like to broaden your music with world music uh, stuff. Give it a try, definitely. And then we come down to the two CDs that I found uh, very recently. These were recent finds in, on the freebie shelf at Hazard Records. Uh, first one was, sad to say, was very underwhelming, did not care much for it. It is Breakout by Miley Cyrus. This was this was her first true solo album. The one that she did before this was kind of a half and half with uh, her TV alter ego, uh, Hannah Montana. Half Hannah Montana, half Miley Cyrus. This one was all Miley Cyrus. And, uh, I mean, you know, her singing was fine. It was, it was very good. I mean, she's a talented singer. It's just that the lyrical content was pretty pedestrian, I guess you'd say. Very teenage stuff, you know. And a far cry from her two most recent albums, which I do enjoy. Uh, Plastic Hearts, her most recent one, as well as uh, Younger Now. Is that the name of the one before that? I like those albums. So yeah, she's she has definitely grown as an artist. So that's a positive thing. But yes, this one, sad to say, was pretty underwhelming. It's about, you know, crushes and breakups and teenage life. She does do a cover of Girls Just Want to Have Fun, which was pretty good. Uh, the, the Cindy Lauper classic, but uh, you know, not all that great an album. I, I will be trading it in, or or you know, putting it in the Goodwill section or whatever. Or if anybody out there wants it, I can mail it to you if you want. Uh, but the other one actually was a uh, surprise, a very pleasant surprise. I think I had heard of this uh, group before. I'm not. Sh I'm not positive, but uh, yeah, Snake River Conspiracy. They are an industrial rock group, and this was their debut album, uh, Sonic Jihad. And industrial rock is a genre that I have come into pretty recently in the grand scheme of things. Uh, my most recent discovery, other than these guys, was a group called Stabbing Westward. And uh, I've really come to like them. I've got, what, two of their albums, maybe? Uh, and yeah, this was, I think, I think this was their only major label album. It might have been their only album. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, good stuff. I've, I, I'm not a huge 
uh, industrial rock fiend yet, but uh, what I've heard of it uh, between uh, Stabbing Westward and these guys is pretty good so far. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to give this one a few more listens, and I'm very glad that I uh, stumbled into it. Uh, quite a pleasant surprise. So yeah, this just goes to show that you will never know the um, the jewels that you'll find hiding on the freebie shelf at your local record store, if your record store is lucky enough to have one. So anyway, that will do it for my inaugural edition of Rescue Records. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.